Hi, what's going on, Patriots fans? This is Jason Cole back with the Patriots Drive Podcast today, talking about three receivers that we think New England should target. Now, with big news today, Russell Wilson is headed to Denver. The Seahawks look like they are in full rebuild mode, and there's a couple receivers on their roster that New England should have their eyes on. But before we get into that, make sure you guys like and subscribe. Comment on the video down below who you'd like to see so you can stay up to date. But Cole, which one of the two Seahawks receivers would you like to see New England target? I wouldn't love either of these guys necessarily, but I do think out of the options that are out there, in which a lot of them have been gone. I mean, we saw Chris Godwin get tagged, Devontae Adams. Uh, Mike Williams got signed to an extension with the Chargers. So there's not a lot of options out there that are great left. But out of these two guys, I think a guy like Tyler Lockett would fit this offense pretty well. I think he'd be an upgrade over Nelson Aguilar. He was PFF's 12th highest graded receiver, 81 overall grade uh, this past season. He's a guy that he he seems like he's more of a slot, vertical slot type receiver, but he actually played 302 snaps this year out of the slot and 509 snaps out wide. So he he played at that X spot in the Seattle offense, a decent amount, uh, probably opposite of, of uh, DK Metcalf. Maybe he played some of the Z as well. So he, he plays outside more often even than he plays in the slot, which is kind of surprising to me, but he's a guy that can fill that role. If, if we end up trading Nelson Aguilar, we want to upgrade him a little bit, try out Tyler Lockett. His contract isn't great. It's not horrible. He's 30 years old. His cap number for this upcoming season would be $10 million. The year after that, it's 17, 24, 24. But the one thing about that is after next season, which is cap number is $10 million, like I said, he has zero guaranteed salary. So you can part ways with him for nothing. You don't have any dead cap. You can cut him, trade him, do whatever you want to do. You can get out of that contract. Obviously, that doesn't make a lot of sense if you're giving up significant draft capital to, for a one-year rental. But if you get if you can get him for like a fourth, fifth round pick, maybe something late, maybe Seahawks are desperate to trade him, get just clear out more money and just really restart, blow this thing up. Maybe you can get him for a cheap pick and you can use him as a one-year rental transition, get Aguilar out of here, save some cap space, um, get Lockett in here. It's basically a one-for-one -one swap between those two of what their cap numbers would be. So maybe a guy like Lockett would would produce more production. He's a really talented receiver. I think that's uh, a solid option for the Patriots. Yeah, I like Tyler Lockett as a receiver. I think he's been very consistent. You know, he's put up some good numbers as of late, 10 touchdowns in 18, 8 in 19, 10, and then 8 again the last two years. So he, he's a very good deep threat, and I think that he'll bring a dynamic to this offense that is similar to Nelson Aguilar, but maybe he's a little more effective at it. I just, I'm not a fan with our low draft capital this year and the depth at the draft class in the receiver position. I've given up a fourth or fifth round pick to just get a run year, one year rental, although I think that he might be better than most guys um, that we could draft in the fourth or fifth round. I, I, I don't know. I'd almost just rather keep that pick and you know, get a different position or draft a uh, receiver. The other part of this, DK Metcalf, I think that a lot of Patriots fans are still bitter that we didn't take him over Nikhil Harry. But this one, as much as it sounds, you know, awesome, I, I just don't see it happening. He's almost been a thousand yard receiver his first three years in the league. He had 900 yards his rookie year, 1300 last or two years ago, and then 960. And, you know, he had 12 touchdowns last year. But the thing with this is this is going to be his last year of his rookie contract. Debo Samuel signed $20 million a year. He's going to be asking for something around that. And it, it sounds enticing, and I think we'd want New England to do it, but I just don't see them pulling the trigger, trading probably a first or second round pick for him and then turning around and having to spend the money on him. I, I don't know. I, I think this is very unlikely, although he's an absolute animal on the field. He would be a great outside X receiver for us, someone that brings a lot of dynamic to the field that, a lot of teams don't have guys that can match up with him with his size and speed. So it's intriguing. I, I would love to see it happen. I just, I, I think that this is very unlikely. Yeah. If you're asking me if I'd like to see DK Metcalf on the Patriots, it's an absolute yes. I mean, no question about it would fill the X role. Great on this offense. Not many people in the NFL can guard DK Metcalf one-on-one -on -one. his, his amount of size and speed that he has. The combination of those two is, is unmatched. It's tough to find a guy like that. You don't, they don't, they don't grow on trees. You don't find people like that very often. So he came back half as a stud. If I if I had the choice to have him on the Patriots, it would be obviously absolutely. But I just don't think it's realistic, and that's why I I said uh, Tyler Lockett. DK's a freak. He's a beast. He would be great here. It's just not that realistic. We'd have to give up high draft capital to get him. Probably at least a first round pick. He'd be coming into a his final year of his deal, like you said. Going to be asking for a huge contract. I don't think the Patriots are going to pay him. So. If you're going to choose between giving up a fourth or fifth for Tyler Lockett or a first and probably more for DK Metcalf, both on a one-year rental, I'd rather go Tyler Lockett. 
talking about the draft capital, I don't think that the Patriots' ability to really help receivers develop, they haven't been great at that in recent years. So I don't have a lot of confidence in them. I'd, if you're going to use a fourth or fifth round pick on a receiver or take Tyler Lockett for a year or two, I'd probably rather go with Tyler Lockett just because he's a proven commodity in the NFL. He's shown that he can be a really, really solid receiver. He's had a lot of great production in Seattle. I know they throw the ball a ton, but it'd be cool to see Mac Jones with a, a defect receiver like that who's a little bit more productive than Nelson Aguilar. So next up on our list, this one is a free agent. This wouldn't be a trade candidate. Allen Robinson. He's projected con his projected contract is three years, $15 million annually. He's he's a number one receiver. He's obviously had his ups and downs. He got franchise tagged last year. My thing about Allen Robinson is another guy that wasn't at the top, top of our list before all these franchise tags happened and, and Calvin Ridley, that situation, all that stuff. But he's quickly moved up there on my list personally. He's had a ton of production and it's been in Chicago his entire career. He's had a merry-go-round of quarterbacks. He's always had bad quarterbacks his whole career and he's always produced. He's at a thousand yards, multiple seasons. He, he's been a really solid receiver. He's been very consistent for a guy with such bad quarterback play. So I think if you get Allen Robinson in this offense with some guys to compliment him, like Jacoby Myers, Kendrick Bourne, and then our running game, I think that opens up a ton for Allen Robinson. I think it would give Mac Jones a true number one weapon. The money is the one aspect of this that is going to be questionable. $15 million a year. I think he could be worth it in this offense. I really do. I, the question is, will Bill Belichick pay a receiver $15 million a year? That's that's the thing that I don't know. Apparently, the Patriots were interested in him before he got franchise tagged last season by the Bears. So maybe they're interested in, him, interested in him again. And he's really one of the true, the last true free agent wide receivers that I feel like could be a good fit for the Patriots and would fill that number one X role. Yeah, 6'3", 211. In 2019 and 2020, he was top 10 in both targets and receptions. He's had He had over 1,000 yards in both those years. He's had a good track record. And, you know, he was a little hurt last year, played on the franchise tag. Don't know if he really wanted to be in Chicago and, you know, kind of very uh, up and down quarterback play. He'd come here with a young quarterback. Um, he's only um, 28 years old. He'd be 29, 30, 31 years old, you know, depending on how long we sign him. Um, has good speed, good size at the position, would add a little bit more dynamic and, uh, you know, versatility to this uh, receiver room. And I, I don't hate the idea. Like you mentioned, there's probably three or four receivers that I had above him. But now with those guys being gone and those possibilities out the window, this is probably the next best thing. And I, I don't want to say New England has to settle for him because I still think Allen Robinson can play some good football, but they might just have to settle for Allen Robinson if they really do want a right receiver one. So. Um, the next part to this one, this is coming off of, you know, rumors that the Cowboys are going to release receiver Amari Cooper. And I think that this could be an intriguing target if he does get released. Sounds like it's going to happen. But Amari Cooper has had a thousand yards in five of his first, what, seven years in Dallas or well, in the league. And he had three of them in Oakland um, before they went to Vegas and then two of them uh, in Dallas. And last year um, had still had good numbers, eight touchdowns, 865 yards. Playing with Dak Prescott, we all know the loaded receiver core there. So I think that maybe um, Amari is someone that can come in and you know have have success with Mac Jones. I, I don't know it, if I value him or Allen Robinson as you know better than one each, one or an, another. I think that they can come in and play good football here. He's a little bit younger than Allen Robinson, and I would say that maybe his contract is going to be a little bit less than Allen Robinson's, so maybe that's where New England values it. It might be similar. Um, it might be a little bit less, but when you're getting cut, maybe New England can control that if there's no other bidder. Sounds like Miami's in on him, maybe a couple other teams, and they have more cap space than us, so they might kind of drive the market up on him and maybe push him out of our price range. So Amari Cooper is interesting. Uh, option for the Patriots if he does get cut by Dallas and I wouldn't mind seeing them try to bring him in yeah it's going to be interesting to see what these two receivers end up getting I think they, they could be pretty close in price range I even think Amari might end up getting more than him just because I don't know I think Amari Cooper's a really talented receiver I think he's one of the best route runners in the league he's produced everywhere he's been he's been great for ever since he entered this league which it's it's been impressive what he's done 442 speed uh he's 6'1 210 pounds He's very talented. That's for sure. There, there's no doubt about that. So his contract situation is why he's getting released. The Cowboys need more money. They already have a bunch of really good receivers. They're planning on re-signing Michael Gallup. 
a guy that we had on this on this list a week ago when we recorded the video, but he is no longer expected to be a free agent. Dallas is expected to extend him. So Amari Cooper is is now on the chopping block and and he might get cut. So if he does, I think he'd be a great fit for the Patriots. His I mean, he lined up out wide, 619 snaps and in the slot, 279 snaps. So another outside guy. Kind of a theme on this list is is more outside receivers because that's what the Patriots need. They need a guy. Nelson Aguilar is probably not going to cut it. I do think he'll be better in year two, but Amari Cooper would fill that role perfectly. I would love either him or Allen Robinson. I think those are definitely the two the top two options for us. The price range is going to be what's interesting, and I think that Mike Williams signing that extension for twenty million dollars a year, I think that's going to bump both these guys' price up, and it might price us out, uh, price them out of the Patriots range because Belichick does not enjoy spending top dollar for a receiver. The good thing is. The Patriots have been interested in receivers. They've had their name in the, all the draft for the receivers and and free agents in recent years. So that's the good news. Bad news, they've never pulled the trigger in recent years. So that's one thing that that's frustrating about the situation. But a couple other guys real quick to touch on, and, and I'll let you uh, take us out. But Odell Beckham Jr. and Michael Gallup, like I said, two other guys that we both, Jason and I both liked, thought they might be solid receivers here for the price. Both of them are expected to sign extensions with their current teams, uh, Odo Beckham with the Rams and Michael Gallup with the Cowboys. So those are two other options that we have in mind. If they do not get extended by their teams, I think both those guys are other options as well. Yeah, and we've heard New England have ties with lots of different uh, receivers. And like you said, they've never pulled the trigger. So hopefully they pull the trigger on someone, whether it's in the draft or in free agency or trade uh, market like we talked on in this video but let us know down below what you guys think like comment subscribe stay up to date with us um, be looking out for our live shows on every tuesday 9 p.m eastern time um, and follow us on instagram so you can stay up to date but for now we will talk to you later